Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And we have the mighty Jörg Sprav with us today and his most powerful slingshot, which is some crazy thing with a, what, two meter draw length on it, pretty much, by the look of it? Uh, yeah, it's a little over two meters in foot extension. Which is enough, especially when you shoot 20 millimeter steel balls. Jörg's gonna show me how to shoot this thing and then I'll pick it up and we'll have a go and shoot some plywood or something. Cause you tell me it goes through. It will. <laughs> and catch. All right. Suck. I got it. Hey. <laughs> Shooting it is fairly easy. You shoot it sideways, gangster style, um, so that you can actually close your left eye and then aim with the right eye over the bands and over the tip of the upper fork. And then you only have to compensate for the height, otherwise it's going to go straight where this aims at. And then in the beginning, you will probably be good to just only draw it to the corner of your mouth. You then won't have full power, but um, you will feel a little bit more safe that way. So uh, no, in, in, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. And in Sorry, the no. you know, if you really want full power, you stretch it out really far, yeah. really far, really far, and then you let go. Yeah, that's got power. That's straight through the ply. It's got plenty of power. <laughs> nice. So again, lift the thing up, yeah. and then draw it really, really, really fast. Let go. Oh, bang. It really does pack punch, doesn't it? <laughs> That's a lot of power. Yeah. So now it's your turn. Fantastic. And you. Right. And here's your ammo. Just one. Well, Just I can give you more if you need, but one at a time. One at a time. <laughs> okay. So then, show me your shot. <laughs> right. Ding. Oh. Draw well, why didn't mine go through? More. You have to draw out a little more. Right. <laughs> Try again. But at least it came back to you. It so did, you only yeah. need one ball. It's actually a great advantage of these things that you can reuse the ammo as long as you can find it. So yeah. And right, all okay. the way back then. As far as possible. More, 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 more. Good. Yeah, no, it went through. Now that works. <laughs> Nice. This is how you shoot a slingshot, a yeah. powerful slingshot. Of course, you can also shoot arrows. I've done lots of slingbow versions. You know what? So I have never shot an arrow off a catapult. No? Never have. Probably should change that. <laughs> nice. Another one Another yeah. one that went through. We were chatting earlier, and you were saying about would they have used this in medieval times had they had rubber? And I mean, the answer is yes without a doubt. And they could have made it. Yeah, they could have made it. Actually. Isn't it satisfying? <laughs> <laughs> what is it about shooting things that makes you smile? I don't know. I don't know. And the aesthetics of destruction. <laughs> <laughs> it, sh it shouldn't make you feel good, but somehow it does. It does. <laughs> So well, that works. Could we talk a little bit about history of rubber yeah. and the properties of rubber and so on? Well, rubber, <laughs> rubber is obviously your thing, Jörg. Okay. So uh, you start off. <laughs> okay. Well. Okay. So first of all, what is very interesting about rubber is that rubber stores energy therm uh, on a thermal way. So it doesn't do this mechanically like a bow would or mm -hmm. a spring would, but 
rubber behaves like a natural gas. The rubber, in, when you keep it stretched specifically on a cold day, it will not hold the energy for long. It yeah. dissipates into the environment. This means that you hold it out and then the draw resistance goes down immediately hmm. until it reaches a minimum. And if you are in freezing conditions, that minimum will be zero. The rubber would not contract at all. It would just stay that long until it, it, yeah. it, it heats up again. So therefore, rubber is completely unsuitable for crossbows. Mm. Because you have to draw it out and let go of it fast, like you do with a longbow, as an example. Exactly. The longer you keep it drawn out, the weaker the shot will yeah. be. And the problem is that then, of course, also your aim... You, it, cha it changes everything. <laughs> yeah. so, so for crossbows, I think rubber mm. would not be suitable mm. at all. You need to cock it and then fire it. But I mean, if we come right back to the beginning, because most people are going to look at that material and go, well, it's rubber. Of course, they didn't have that in medieval times. Well, they could have done because we had the trees, although they're um, New World trees, but we had the trees okay. and you vulcanize it with, with uh, sulfur, don't you, and heat. The rubber tree is a New World tree. Originally, yeah. you would only find it in South America. That we later found out that you can actually make latex from dandelion milk. Right. So, and I think those were around in medieval times. <laughs> I'm sure they were. <laughs> uh, probably just nobody had an idea. Mm. Nobody uh, thought about doing something with the milk from dandelions. But, but they could have made it by just simply cooking it up with yeah. sulfur at a, about 180 centigrade for a limited amount of time. And that would actually put it into, uh, uh, in, into stretchy rubber like this. So, so the process is easy. They had the materials. They just didn't know how to do it. If it would have been invented, what? I think it would have changed things. Yeah, and I, I agree with you, actually. I know rubber is your thing and, and you know, the medieval world is mine. Um, and so that is firmly in the non-traditional for me. But I wholly agree with you. I think that would have changed it completely because it's so, well, flexible is the obvious thing, but it's so, you can do so many things with it and it's so useful, stores power so easily in such a simple, condensed... Object. For this, you can make this in 30 minutes. Yeah. You could have made this in 30 minutes in medieval times too. Yeah. You know, there's nothing special that I really used here. Yeah. So I believe that it would have changed warfare specifically uh, because it was so cheap. Mm. And of obviously, ammo can be reused. Ammo is super easy to make. They would probably use lead, which is more suitable yeah. than steel anyway. Right? So, I suppose, I mean, if you think of the example of a slinger, so somebody who's doing that, mm -hmm. You could say, well, that throws a stone and a sling throws a stone and they'll so throw a stone the same kind of distance, probably within 10, 20, 40 metres, whatever. Mm -hmm. But a slinger needs a great deal of space all around him yeah. with which to work. So the density of shooting is going to be quite spread out. Whereas those ones, obviously, you could be dum, 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 dum. So the density of shooting, you probably get four or six guys in the same space that you'll get one slinger. You also have a few more advantages if you compare it to a normal slinger. First advantage that uh, comes to mind is much easier to learn. Yeah. Like the slinging, I've tried it a few times and I suck at it. I mean, it's really <laughs> awful. I mean, sometimes I get, get it flying, but to aim with it and hit yeah. something is, I think it need, takes you years to really learn it. Yeah. Um, the second, um, a, a slinger needs very, really heavy projectiles to be effective. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't really work well. Uh, this is not the case here. You mm. Also, if you want to in increase the distance, you use smaller ammo and then you can shoot it really, yeah. I think, more far than you can, you can sling an object. Well, we were talking as well about arrows mm -hmm. on that because uh, I think, again, we both agree that that will never um, shoot an arrow as far as a longbow would shoot. Um, sort of, you know, 300 metres, 260, 300 metres. Well, it can shoot it quite far, but it's not an easy construction mm. because um, the, the, the problem with an arrow is the arrow limits your draw length. So as you see, we had a draw length of over two metres. Yeah. And uh, if you would make an arrow that is over two metres long, that obviously <laughs> would be very mm. heavy and it would not fly very mm. far. So, um, so when you do this with a, with a sling bow, um, you either have to make it a long draw length extension, which is possible, uh, or you, um, you would have to make it really, really hard to pull. So you put a lot of a ton of rubber on it. Um, you can do that. It will never be as powerful as a long bow, but yeah. it will be a very useful common bow. So. Yeah, no, I, th I think that's the case. And the other thing that always intrigues me about this is sort of multiple load 
is is like having a system that would allow you to shoot like they did with the trebuchet they shoot a basket of rocks not just not just one rock you know you can throw a basket of grapefruit sized rocks and that's fantastic against personnel as well as single rock against fortification but i think you could do something similar with rubber really quite easily that you could throw a bundle of six arrows or eight arrows that the whole system will shoot 200 meters but you're shooting six at a go you know yeah. I, I see that as completely possible the rubber also has one huge advantage you can always double it up yeah. so you can actually really tune this thing to the task that you have you know mm. you need something really powerful you just put a lot of rubber on it yeah you just need something small for practice and so on same weapon just less mm. rubber so it, it actually is so scalable it's yeah. also a huge advantage whereas if you build a longbow that is the bow and it, you can't really weaken it or make it stronger it is what it is yeah. so actually you know what's also occurred to me is the way you build is wood so it's usually plywood but it's wood mm -hmm. everything that you've done on your channel pretty much or 90 percent of what you've done on your channel would have been possible had they had rubber in 1400 mm -hmm. and you know i think that says it all because we've seen you know bowling ball shooters and all sorts you know we've seen it all on your channel and it would all have been possible yeah that's the mm. what, but what really what what fascinates me so much about rubber is because it's a it's a perfectly natural material it's actually tree sap that's yeah. what it is i'm a i'm a fairly strong guy but i'm not fast yeah i can't run fast i can't throw I throw it off. no i can't either actually but, but the thing is that this Simple material takes my mm. strength and converts it into kinetic energy so easily and so effectively with nearly no losses. Yeah. And, and this is what always fascinates me about this really simple material. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing, because I do crossbows, that's, or medieval crossbows, that's my thing. And they're just so inefficient. You know, it's the complete opposite of, of that. Um, yeah, it's, it's a different world for me, that. Yeah, it is. So. I think we can agree it would have changed history. Uh, I think without a doubt it would have done. And I think it would have done it in 50 ways that we could predict and 100 ways that we couldn't. Okay, well, we're going to wrap it up now. Uh, thanks very much, Jörg. It's been great. Um, world of slingshots, rubber, and the medieval, what would have been? Could have been. <laughs> Let's go. Bang, bang. Nice. <laughs> Thank you.